Welcome back to our channel. If you've been following us for a while, you know last year we had some major soil issues. And what we did is we got a bunch of different soil tests done and we're gonna share them with you today. We used two soil testing companies to test our growing spaces to kind of compare and contrast and see which one we liked. So we have My Soil and Midwest Labs and we'll talk about them in this video. Stick around if this interests you. So like we already mentioned, we struggled last year with a new growing space that we broke ground on and we planted a ton of food up there. 1,000 chili plants, 300 or 400 tomato plants, 800 feet of potatoes. Like I'm trying to recall last season because it feels like so long ago in the middle of winter, which we're actually having a nice winter day here. It's um, unseasonably warm. We are officially in March now, so we're getting closer to the new season and getting closer to the new season, we really need to look into our soils to decide where we're gonna put stuff and how we can grow the best gardens possible. It's not too late in the year for you to do this if you're in our growing zone either. These guys get their results back lickety split and you can analyze them and decide what you need to do or what not to do and just leave things alone and plant or decide where you're planting things. Mm -hmm. So when I say we had bad soil last year, our pH in one of our growing spaces was 8.6, which was really high. A different growing space was, let me look right here because we have all of the data right here in front of us, was 8.2 and that space grew corn and it grew pretty well. So we knew that that space was more optimal to work with than the 8.6 growing space. And just to be upfront, the 8.6 growing space, as far as pH goes, we have abandoned it for this next year. We're not, it's not even tested here. These are all other growing spaces that are tested here. And let's get right into the four growing spaces that we're testing. So we are testing in this video, talking about this greenhouse. We are talking about what we call our house garden. It was the original homeowner's garden, which performed phenomenally last year. It did really well. And then we are testing the old cornfield, which will be planted not to corn this coming year. And then we're testing a new growing space that is right adjacent to what we call the old cornfield, which will no longer be corn. The uh, old cornfield that we planted in had some sheep and goats on it for years. And so we kind of, we knew the nitrogen levels were going to be high. And then if you try to grow nightshades, tomatoes, and peppers and stuff, and that they kind of curl the leaves up, they don't do well in high nitrogen soils. And so we avoided that and we put corn there last year to suck that nitrogen up, try to get more of an optimal growing space in there this year. Yeah. Which I think we'll be pleasantly surprised with, I hope. Mm -hmm. So getting into the companies that we decided to use, we decided to go with My Soil for one of our garden testing companies. And the reason we decided to use them, well, there's a bunch of reasons, but one of them is I like that they're here in the US. They are really friendly to work with. If you contact them, they will talk to you. They have a really nice interface on their website as far as looking all this information up in the future. It gives you different recommendations as far as which fertilizers to add, if you wanna add an organic mix or a synthetic mix. It just really breaks it down nicely and makes it very user friendly. So. I like that we chose to use them. And when we did choose to use them, we used them first and we pulled that soil probably two weeks before we pulled the other soil. So these aren't the same batches of soil that are tested, but they are from the same space, which maybe can make up some of the reasons why the test did come out quite different. We tried to get the samples in the same general space within the space too. So it wasn't like on the other end of the garden or something, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a perfect experiment either. So just to be honest with you. The reason that we went with two companies was because we got the My Soil results back and our pH showed that it had dropped a lot. And it was amazing. And we were like, is this too good to be true? We kind of, we didn't really believe it, honestly. So that's why we wanted a comparison to kind of, to compare. You know, you always get a second opinion with things. So we went with Midwest Labs because we went with them before in the past, but we always did that through our extension agent. And we, we cut that out this year. We just went directly through Midwest Labs this year, which saved some money. So that was nice. And their findings did also show that our pH had dropped in the growing space that we have previous soil records for. So the only one we have previous soil records for are what we call the old cornfield, and that was at 8.2. And this year, through my soil, it said that the pH is 7.13, which is a significant drop. So we got a second comparison, which is 7.9 from Midwest Labs. So it did come down 
a decent amount, but there is a bit of a difference between 7.13 and 7.9. pH is exponential, so every tenth of a point, it's significant changes. And so coming down from 8.1 or 8.2 to 7.9 is, it's a good change. When you get your soil test back, pH is very important and you want to be as close to 7 as possible. That's neutral and that's optimal growing for most things. Mm -hmm. So when we got the first finding, we reached out to my soil and we actually talked with Matt, who was very helpful and very knowledgeable. And we learned some things about how they test their soil, which they have some videos. I'll probably link them in the show notes about how they test their soil because they test it differently with their testing kit, which I'll show you what it looked like here. It's like a little container and you put a scoop of soil into that. This method is called an ion exchange resin test and it extracts nutrients differently than other typical soil tests. Anyways, check out the link in the video description if you're interested in this because I am definitely not the expert. So that was one of the variations. And then for Midwest Labs, so we send in a couple cups of scooped soil um, that's just dry and it just goes to them. So a lot of different things happen chemically is my understanding that are just different in the two different testing methods, as well as the fact that we pulled them at different times from different batches. So that all kind of might play into it. When we talked to Matt about his uh, results, he explained to us that pH, nitrogen levels, all these different things we're testing for macronutrients, they vary a lot depending on the time of year, what the plant's using, your water, um, you know, if you get a bunch of rain, it's going to probably drop your pH because the rain water is close to neutral. You take your soil sample right after that. So there's a lot of factors. And like Matt, Matt told us, you know, if you are going to test your soil, try to just pick one company and just stick with it. And then, cause then maybe your results will be more consistent and you'll know, you know, what you're doing. So like we went from Midwest labs to my soil and the results were very different and it's hard to base what you're planning on doing off of that. It'd be, it's a lot easier if you go from last year's soil test, which was the same company as this year's soil test. Mm -hmm. Yep. Especially when there's all the recommendations in there and stuff too. So we kind of have a little conundrum right now as far as what we're going to do in our growing spaces. We have great news that our pH went down across the board and I'll show you them right now. In this greenhouse, our pH... On the My Soil test, it says that it is 6.73. And on the Midwest Labs test, it says our pH is 7.6. In the house garden, which is the garden space that's been grown the most on this property, on My Soil, it was 7.28. And on Midwest Labs, it was 7.5. Pretty close on that one. Yeah, that was. And then for the old cornfield, we already talked about it, but I'll talk about it real quick again. It was 7.13 for my soil, and then for Midwest Lab, 7.9. And then we have our new growing space, which I'm really excited to bust open a new growing space this year. This will become the new cornfield since we're rotating out of that old cornfield space. And the pH, according to my soil over there, was 7.1. And for Midwest Labs, it was 7.7. .7. So either one of those I'm pretty happy with. So you send your soil samples off, you'll get them back. Both these companies are very beady about getting your results back to you. I'd say my soil was a little easier to deal with as far as getting your stuff shipped off and getting your results back. You can get them, look them up on online really easily. And you just have a login. It's really easy. Midwest Labs isn't that bad. It's a little more uh, antiquated um, software or whatever for getting yourself logged in or whatever. But um, both companies have very knowledgeable people working there and you can call them up and They'll go through your results with you and they'll tell you what you need to add, what don't you need to add. And just really, I highly recommend that because I'll, most of the stuff is over, you know, Gen Pop's knowledge of soil science. And so talking to an expert is probably a good idea. Yep. So you talked to Midwest Labs, right? And got some understanding of what they recommended that we add or don't add and what did you hear talking to midwest labs based on these they, reports they went through all of our stuff and they said to add some elemental sulfur in our greenhouse space and said everything else looked pretty much fine just leave it alone don't add it don't add anything mm -hmm. and then as far as the my soil recommendations there are some recommendations as far as what to add and how much per square foot so we might 
trial a couple of areas doing their recommendation and then retest again and see what ends up happening and, you know, obviously visually monitor the space, see how our plants end up growing and kind of go from there. So when you talk to Midwest Labs, they'll give you uh, amendment advice and they'll tell you pounds per acre and you just have to do a little bit of math on that to figure out how much you need to add. My soil does a very good job giving you your recommendations and they'll even give it to you organic or synthetic, um, breaking it down that way because the synthetic stuff is just much more rapid to be uptaken by the plants. Kind of um, very helpful and clear. I'd say my soil stuff is a little more clear, but you know, either way, I'd say call a call the companies after you get your tests and just give them a five minute conversation and they'll really get you steered in the right direction. So being into gardening, we should really be being into soil and I am very much a novice. I'm learning a lot. He knows a little bit more than me, but who really knows a lot is Matt from My Soil. And he has a YouTube channel called Soil Lab. There are a lot of really interesting things on there. At least we find them interesting as far as getting your plants to really grow and monitoring soil. Check them out if you're interested. That's another good person to look into and to learn a lot from. So this video is intended to hopefully inspire some other people to look into your soil and trust the results and do something about your results. Last year when we got that 8.6, we thought, eh, we'll just try it. We'll give it a shot. And we ended up planting a 100 by 200 garden plot and it failed. We got potatoes out of it, but everything else failed. Maybe some chilies out of there too, but not as many as we should have had. And on another note, we are abandoning that uh, garden plot because it's not worth fighting with. It's You're not going to be able to change it in any amount of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll see what the future holds, what comes of that space, but it doesn't really matter at this moment. So this is a reminder to just look into your soil and listen, get a plan going. Listen, listen to it. Listen to your results. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And here are two soil companies that we've enjoyed working with. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you're interested in this kind of thing, please consider liking and subscribing. We're really excited for the 2025 garden season to be coming about and we have a lot of big plans. So catch us in the next one and we'll show you what's happening in the garden. Thanks for watching.